Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And our goal, our mission, our purpose is to support you in being the very best version of yourself, living your greatest life with ease and joy. And so part of that mission, you know, for me means interviewing and bringing to you all these wonderful speakers and guests that we have um, who have wonderful wisdom, teachings, energy healing, etc., to share with you. So please just keep, uh, open up your hearts, open up your minds, and be here fully present so that you can receive as much as we are offering you, okay? So today we have on the show Laura Hosford. She's back with us. Yay. We always love having Laura on the show because I, I have to tell you, I always learn so much, and the energy processes are always so amazing. It's like, it's awesome. It's, it's just so much fun. And so Laura, <clears throat> sorry, today is going to, we're talking about a call to action for earth angels and goddesses of love. And so what does that mean? We're going to talk to Laura about that. And for some reason now my voice is going. So it's like, oh, that is so cool. So um, I'm just going to briefly, you know, tell you a little bit about, about Laura. Like I said, she's been on our show many times before and we always love having her. She's uh, a fan favorite. She's your favorite. She's a sacred oracle and goddess of light emissary for the divine feminine Christ consciousness. And she uses her special gifts of channeling celestial beings of light, ascended masters, including Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary. She is a womb priestess and ceremonial frequency rebirther, a shamanic ordained minister, a master of Akashic Records teacher, light language channel, intuitive energy healer and retreat leader, and so much more. So for some reason, right in this moment, my voice is going. So I'm just going to bring Laura to the show. Laura, <laughs> welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so sweet. And I love being with your sweet sweetness and your sweet audience and so connect with everyone here. So it's really, really fun to be here. I always have a great time. And I'm just so excited to be here today. And I just the energy is starting to run. So hopefully everyone can begin to open and feel it and just receive it. And I actually thought I wanted to do something a little different to get started. So I actually I have this beautiful deck of cards that I use um, the divine feminine uh, Oracle deck by Megan Watterson. I'll just kind of show you those cards. And these are the most fun cards. I just love these cards. And so I said, I'm going to pull a card today for the audience. And so I pulled Lilith and who was the first woman. I don't think I've pulled her card before. And she says, I am the voice of the body and soul. I choose the life that I desire to live. And I thought, wow, that is just so spot on for our, um, our call today because we're going to be talking about the body, right, and the soul. And I'm going to be taking you all through some processes today. What I kind of have prepared is to talk a little bit and then to go and take you through some processes, talk a little bit, go through some processes, and so we can really give you, like, a great, great, you know, just experience today of opening up to knowing, you know, beyond this body, I'll just put it that way, beyond the body, that you are this beautiful multidimensional being, you are a radiant being of light and love, and and that is the call to action that I'm really hearing very loudly now. I'm here, I've been hearing the trumpets of Gabriel calling and calling us home, and you could even um, what you know what that that means is really the law of one so you don't really hear much about the law of one it's it's not something that is material that's being taught there was a channeling of the law of one way back in the 70s and there's like one or two books on it and the lady that channeled it she's no longer with us but um you know there's only one teacher on the planet that's teaching about the law of one right now and that's david wilcock and I, I i follow him and i'm like i'm so glad that someone is beginning to talk about this material because what that is is the embodiment of the christ consciousness that's really what that is and you know what's really special about this incarnation as we've talked about before is every 26,000 years there's like this you know um, timing or whatever of the universe to give us this ability to graduate, you know, to graduate from whatever realm uh, our lower consciousness has been experiencing, wherever our soul has kind of been focused on experiencing different dimensions as we travel, you know, through eternity. And so, you know, in this time, we're getting to graduate. We're getting to like, you know, really 
you know, go home and, and graduate from the third dimension, if you will, and the fourth dimension and rise with Mother Earth into that new fifth dimensional space, which is really an unknown in a sense that we as humans, we haven't really experienced that before. I mean, we were in Lemuria, which was, you know, close to being fifth dimensional, I think. But that was so long ago that who really remembers that, right? Mm -hmm. That experience. And, you know, and then Atlantis was really a fourth dimensional frequency, but still that was thousands of years ago. But this is different this time. This is so different because we are, you know, doing this as a group. And, you know, our soul groups are trapped. They've been traveling together. Uh, I call them cadres, which are, you know, around 7,000 souls. And, you know, this time we're getting to do it together. You know, we don't have to walk the path alone. And it, it's, it's, it's so exciting to me to have this opportunity to do that. So Lilith, you know, she brings this beautiful message of that she is the embodiment of sovereignty mm. um, to declare our desires and, 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 and do what must be done in order to live them out. I just love that. That is just like yeah. awesome, awesome, because you know, I'm beginning to really show another side of me, Alara, that I have really don't show very frequently to many people or many audiences, but, you know, is, is my own uh, initiation and pathway um, that started in November, I started to shift in my own body. And, you know, uh, I was very excited for that because it was like, it was showing me where this new whole consciousness is able to evolve because I have this whole new relationship with my own body. And so Lilith is here to remind us of that. And, you know, that, uh, you know, we, we don't, we don't, we're not subservient to anyone, mm -hmm. right? To anything. Um, and so let me just share real quick that she asked this really cool question. She says, what would happen if you left everything behind? What would happen if you left everything behind? And she wonders what prevents you from getting to experience all that you desire. Is it you? Is it an idea of some, someone that you have to be? Is it something that society's definition of what it means to be a woman? And so she asked this question to really help us to really reach that light of consciousness, to really walk in that rarefied air of light again, and to really begin to call that in. And so, you know, I'll just invite everyone to relax and to connect with your heart and to begin to allow these energies that are already the goddess spiral is starting to spiral in these energies of the goddess to you right now. And all you have to do is just open up to receive them. I mean, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. It's really not intended to be. And so, you know, I love, love, love that question because honestly, in my own journey, you know, there have been times when I've asked that question about, oh, but I don't want to leave my family behind. Oh, I don't want to leave my friends behind. What's going to happen, you know? And, but now I'm coming to this realization that, you know, they're just playing their roles, just like I'm playing my role. And, you know, what I've been seeing lately is that there's almost three different Earths, in a sense, going on. There's almost like a splitting of the consciousness into three different, but it's not really a splitting so much as that we inside of us, you know, we have still maybe we have multifaceted, you know, views of things. Um, we still have some third dimensional, you know, particularly with our body, our body Deva, and she has her own soul consciousness. And now that we are raising our own soul consciousness, then she can begin to follow suit because when we have enough soul consciousness that we can come into the body, then she can begin to awaken into a higher level of consciousness. But it's like we're taking the lead on that. So you know, we're very much still seeing the dynamics of the third dimensional world playing out mm -hmm. around us. And then, you know, we still are in this kind of fourth dimensional space of the false time linear matrix that we're still living within the calendar and, you know, that kind of thing. But then we have this beautiful emerging part, you know, this beautiful emerging part of our true self that is really hovering there and I, I like to call her my, I like to call her the angelic goddess self. And gosh, I can't tell you how many people I've done sessions with um, 
Blair and I'm so, so excited because I'm seeing it just right there above people just ready to just come in and just fully embody them, you know, in this new beautiful way of really activating, you know, them into back into that frequency of wholeness. And nice. so, you know, it's, it's like the question that was coming up was, you know, are you willing to exchange anything within yourself, which is unlike love, you know, for a greater capacity to love, to hold more love, to be more love. Yeah. And I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like right here, the sacred rebel. I'm, I'm so ready to do that. And I'm so excited for everyone because, you know, we're being called to do that now, you know, we're being called to be on that front line and really just stay focused on anchoring, you know, that light here on earth, you know, in the body. And, you know, it, it, I like to keep things simple and, you know, it's only when I get into my head or, you know, from time to time that it wants to go down the rabbit hole, right. As we all can do of analyzing and, trying to chop up these little, you know, things, but, you know, really what Divine Mother has been sharing with me for many, probably the last couple of years now, is to keep it simple, mm -hmm. and to really just keep focused your prayer, I call it, on, you know, what is your heart's desire, what's in your heart that wants to come through, and to just keep coming back to that, keep coming back to you know, your soul essence, keep coming back to the light of you, keep coming back to your truth. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so super important right now, especially with, you know, and I, I'm, you know, I'm the first person to admit, you know, I, I could spend all day reading books and looking at YouTube videos and taking classes and courses. And, you know, I love to learn, but, you know, it's so important that I continue to go within and to discover my own truth because that truth is like a internal compass, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, for me. Yeah. And, you know, our, each of us have our own unique truth, meaning that we have that, we've talked about our unique spark. I call it the augment spark, our unique divine blueprint. But this call, you know, the call of the trumpets from Grey Bureau and the call and the call from the law of one is really about just really remembering and awakening to that we're already whole. Mm -hmm. We're already whole. And all we need to do is just really, you know, in a sense, make that our priority of calling ourselves home, calling ourselves home in the body, you know, in these beautiful bodies that we have. And so what does that mean exactly? Because, you know, we're using words to describe something that, there is no words for that in a sense because you're talking about fifth dimensional consciousness, right? And so our languaging today is, I don't know, third dimension, maybe it's fourth dimension, mm -hmm. you know, everything that we do, right? The code and the computers and, and the books and everything. And so, but when you can go into meditation and prayer or stillness or nature or whatever, how you do it, what I've been um, noticing as of late is that we now have this new opening within us at the seventh gate of consciousness to begin to connect with those celestial energies, really call those celestial energies into the body and bringing the merging of our divine blueprint with this beautiful body day because our body days are pretty ready, mm -hmm. you know, they're pretty ready. Um, we might still be working on you know, working through some kinks, we might still have some health issues that we're working through. And, and, and let me, let me just share one example, how this has been happening even for myself. It's sort of like really blowing my mind in the sense that I noticed my body started shifting in November. Well, my body goes out of alignment, like my spine goes out of alignment, my hips go out of alignment, you know, it's, it's like your body's trying to adjust to this energy that's coming in. And I knew I really needed to go to the chiropractor and I was putting it off. And then Monday I um, was doing some stuff and I actually cracked kind of, it, 
it sounded like a crack or a pop in my, in my back, you know, the middle of my back. And I'm like, Oh no, you know, oh, no. <laughs> so, but I knew, you know, nothing is coincidental, right? Everything is in synchronicity. And I had been doing some deep work on my womb area. Mm. And so sure enough, I go to the chiropractor and he's like, Oh my gosh, your hips are like that. And your, your knees are out and your, your ankles are out and I'm, your shoulders out. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> and and uh, it was like, you would think that's crazy, but I knew that, you know, actually it was a gift because what had happened is I had actually opened up a, uh, the back of my sacral uh, chakra, the back of my, uh, the womb and the back of my sacral chakra, because there was a big um, sedge way of, of energy that wanted to come out that was deeply embedded in there that was mostly not even my own energy. Mm -hmm. It was mostly the collective feminine energy and a contract I've had with the universe, but to carry that, it was time to release it. But, you know, it's like when you, when you really begin to dive into um, just realigning with your body and working with your body, Deva, again, um, which is where I really have felt the calling. The Marys have been speaking to me about this, about, you know, is women to really begin to bring the energy down, you know, from the head to the heart, you know, and we've been training to do that for years now. We, we train to open our heart and in our heart is the important piece because our heart is the new compass. But now to bring it down to the second chakra, to the womb, and to begin to really, as you bring that energy and really embody that energy of your, of your own divine blueprint becomes activated literally within your womb. It's, it's interesting because the womb is actually like an Akashic record. Mm -hmm. It has imprinted all the patterns um, since your birth. And it, it even, uh, even before your birth. And it was interesting because when you agreed to come into this planet and have this experience, you know, we go through the veil, but you agreed to take on you know, these patterns of the matrix or whatever pattern your family ancestry, just, you know, to take on these energies, these shadow energies, um, so that you could then, you know, break through them later on, right? Um, so it, it was really interesting because, you know, some, we agreed to come and have this experience. Mm -hmm. And, and we all know that we, we, you know, we've talked about that time and time again, we agreed to, you know, play, to play by the rules of the game, so to speak, and to experience this free will and this polarity, uh, field of polarities, right? And so our soul knew before our birth that we were going to, you know, come in with these perceived limitations, these programs to give away our light, to give away our light essence to the programs, the false programmers, I call them. But now it's really time to really wake up and to really override, override the programming. And so, you know, what came up recently that was something that I don't think I fully understood until recently, Alara, was that, you know, when I pinpoint a limiting belief, okay, and then an emotional block, and then I go to remove that block and that uh, the emotions, you know, I, I uh, let the emotions come up, reintegrate the emotions, reintegrate a soul aspect, if that's time for that. And then I re release the, the belief. And what was interesting to me that came to my awareness was that even though we do that, that old pattern, that old synapse is still in the brain. It's in the brain and it's in the womb. And so we never, it never really goes away. What happens is we overlay it. We overlay it with a new awareness in a new way of being. And so what happens is that, let's say if you do get triggered again, <laughs> you know, and you come into a point of neutrality, when you come to a point of neutrality, then I think that it really doesn't ever come up again, or that's been my experience. But let's say you get triggered again. And then it becomes a choice point with your new awareness and your new consciousness to choose that new way of being instead of going back into the old pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this, you know, was, was coming up for me in my old, in my own life, uh, 
because uh, my mom, my relationship with my mom, she's been my biggest teacher. It's been the hardest lesson. It's been the biggest teacher. And I caught myself the other day after having a phone call with her of going back into the old pattern of dropping my frequency. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, and I, I caught myself and I said, okay, I know I've, I've healed this, but why am I dropping into that frequency? And I caught myself and I said, because that old pattern was so ingrained through the layers of my beingness. And so I caught myself and I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm choosing to keep my vibration high. And when I say keep my vibration high, I mean at the level of the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So when you can bring your vibration and you can activate, you know, your crown chakra through, you know, just the color or raising your vibration and you entrain yourself and, and the key word is to entrain yourself to continue to live from this seventh uh, chakra, from the crown chakra, that is strengthening that connection to your eighth chakra, which is where we intersect, you know, with our soul. And this is actually beginning to tip you into, uh, into the higher consciousness, into the higher energy, and beginning to really ground that into your awareness, into the body. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. It becomes a choice. You know, it's like those patterns are going to come up, but then you get to choose whether you're going to stay above that pattern or, or not, right? So we still have that free will choice. We can do like, all the healing, you know, we do, and we do a lot, but we, it, you know, we still have to choose, right? Right, right, yeah. right. And, you know, it's interesting because I was reading about the coronavirus and corona, I think the word corona is crown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, well, that, that's very telling in itself right there that they're naming this virus after a crown. But when you really look into the silver lining and all the, you know, it's really just there again as a, I call it a marker. You know, the polarity is just there to show us where we still have some shadow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, oh, you know, through relationships or through even the external world that we're going through right now and just, oh, okay. And I recognize I still have some shadow there and I still have a hidden shadow in my unconscious energy. And if only owning that, acknowledging and just witnessing that as a form, you know, witnessing it from respect, mm -hmm. you know, if, if love is, is, is too far stretched for you really respect is love and love is respect and just respecting that part of you and acknowledging and witnessing that okay you know we all have had we all have had these shadow energies through our own soul's journey and being you know through our evolution of the soul because pretty much you know all of us are either old souls or ancient souls and we're here to graduate right but we still mm -hmm. got we still have young souls on the planet. We still have mature souls and they're still going through their lessons and that's fine. But, um, you know, really about just reclaiming these lost parts, reclaiming these lost aspects and really calling those home and just fully owning, you know, each time that we have this part showing up from the unconscious to embrace it instead of going into resistance. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you can't love it, at least just accept it, accept it and acknowledge it, you know, because sometimes it's, it's hard to say, yeah, I'm going to love that piece of myself. No, but, but at least just acknowledge it and accept it and know that it's there and that it doesn't need to be hidden anymore. Right. 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 You know, and that's just, I really feel like, you know, I know we all <laughs> and we're all tired and, you know, but I'm finding that during this time that um, because a, a few years ago, honestly, four years ago, I knew this time was coming in a sense. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I knew that there was this time coming of, you know, I want to be whole and heal enough. I want to be healed and whole enough that I can remain grounded in my body because I knew that was absolute had to be a must. And I want to remain in peace and calm. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be into all this anxiety and fear. and you know, I am so, so grateful for all the work and, and, and all the, the, the people that helped me along the way too, to get here. And, and now I'm like, you know, I'm not stressed. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. And, you know, 
I think we all deserve a huge pat on the back, a huge hug to ourselves because yeah. we have come such a long way from 2012, especially. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've done so it, much work. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we still have some things to live through. I mean, we still have some things on the earth plane that are going to play out. But our part to play is to, that I feel is to really, from what the guides have said, stay focused. Like even if you have to have blinders right here, you know, uh, let the, the outside, you know, we know the third dimensional structure is going to fall. We know that. We know all these, you know, corruptions and all these things and all these, you know, difficult, you know, things that we're seeing, right, coming out. And as empaths and intuitives and healers, um, I would say be very, be very careful. You know, my guides gave me a caution light because they're giving me a caution light now because how much you let into your body mm -hmm. and how much you let into your awareness because we have to be really careful in that sense because we're here, we're the leaders on the front line. We're here to anchor in, you know, that fifth dimensional light. Um, and so, we want to be very, very mindful. And, you know, really, people talk about protect, protection. And, and yes, it, you know, we still probably need some protection um, in a sense, but your protection is really your wholeness. It's your love vibration. It's being able to vibrate here at that, mm -hmm. you know, that crown, right? The vibration of the crown. And, and just in training the energy every day. And, you know, just really simplify maybe your life. That's what I've been called to do. Simplify, 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 and just open to receive these beautiful energies of Divine Mother and these new light codes, these new frequencies, because if we're running around, you know, what I call like chickens with our head cut off, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to embody these beautiful frequencies. No. And, you know, and I think that it was, it, you know, the coronavirus it was meant to do harm, but yet look what happened. It actually did the flip. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it actually did the flip. Yeah, and it actually, brought us all together, you know. Exactly. It's, you know, it's bringing through a more unified um, level of consciousness of peace and compassion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look at the outpouring of love and compassion and people coming together across the world. Yeah. When, when have we ever had that where it doesn't matter, you know, what country you live in, it doesn't matter what language, it doesn't matter what sex you are, it doesn't matter what you do as a person. But what really matters is that, you know, we're all coming together in this beautiful, beautiful, you know, global wave of peace and reconnection and building mm -hmm. this new matrix of light. So just really quickly, Caroline has this question in the chat because mm -hmm. we were just talking about this. Yeah. So other than grounding, meditating, connecting, being in nature, etc., how do we be careful what we bring in or let in? Do you mean mind info? Yes, be very uh, aware of what you're watching on the YouTube. And if you're watching like news or um, even movies that you may be watching, uh, you know, I see st like, I see stuff on just little commercials, not commercials, but if I have like, you know, the TV on and I want to watch something and then I'll see these kind of like blips about these TV shows. But if you look in, if you're looking at the imagery behind them, it, it's not good because they're, they're flagging. Like there was one and, you know, it was like a vampire thing with red and black. And I'm like, oh no, don't look at that. Don't look at that because that's, that doesn't have a good message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stop and, watching TV, Randy says. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't watch TV, <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. It makes a huge it, difference. It does, you know, and just even if you're going to sit down and watch TV, you know, or so, you're going to watch a program, you know, and I'm not saying to completely cut it off, but I'm just saying be aware and bring yourself into, ask your guides to come in and to lift your energy up to the highest vibration and put yourself into a level of white light and protection. Um, that you, you know, but really, most of us who are already awakened here, we're not going to be necessarily drawn back into the programming, the mind control and the programming mm -hmm. so much. But what I found for myself is I was following someone who was a light worker and her work was very different because 
she has been on the front lines of this sexual slavery type of stuff. She went through the programming and I respect that and I honor that. However, I couldn't watch her YouTube videos anymore because it was just too much. It was too intense. And it was, you know, it was, it was like, I could tell that it was, it was dragging me down into fear, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, no, you know, I appreciate you. I love you. But I don't really need to know that information, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you have to really be aware of what information you're letting into your field right now. Now, as you develop a much stronger, deeper connection with your higher self and your team, and you know, you, you feel very uh, connected and, and, and locked into that vibration and, and you're able to stay in that vibration, okay then, um, you know, maybe you, you're, you could probably watch something like a little bit more. I mean, there is one channel I do watch, but she's very, very positive and upbeat. And the way she presents the information doesn't, it's not the shocking, you know, type of shock effect. <laughs> so, you yes. know, we, we just want to be aware because we're very sensitive individuals and our job is to hold that higher vibration. And, you know, I mean, if that was your job, then you would have been doing that type of work. But the, for all of us here, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And so what about cell phones? What do your guides say about the usage of cell phones and technology? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, a few months ago, it, this really came up in my awareness because back in September, around Labor Day, my guides were talking to me about the EMF. Mm -hmm. And the EMF actually was having an impact on my body physically. And my guide said, because I, I woke up with a swollen knee and I'm like, well, that's never happened before. I know what's going on. And they're like, it's EMF. It's, mm -hmm. it's inflammation. And sure enough, I started, I went to a functional, functional medicine doctor who works with kinesiology and he works with all the vials of energy. And he, he validated I had EM, EMF in four, in four of my organs. Now. I have gotten rid of it and I've asked him what is the best protection and the best protection you can do is to keep your body as healthy as possible mm -hmm. and to keep your digestion system um, operating, you know, as best as possible. Um, and, you know, taking the supplements of support that your body needs. So that would be vitamin C, is very important. Vitamin D is very important. Um, now, as far as the cell phone itself, you know, holding the cell phone is not good. It's not good to even hold the thing, you know. So um, if you can, you know, try not to hold it. Um, and then at night, uh, we put our cell phones on airplane mode. I keep them across the room. Mm -hmm. we, we turn off our Wi Fi. And yeah, so you have to be aware. And the other thing is do not use the wireless headphones. Those emit a lot of uh, frequency into your ears that go into your brain. If you're going to use that, just do the regular, you know, headset, mm -hmm. you know, wire into the phone. But I have a whole blog on my, uh, on my, um, my website about, I researched a lot. Now, I will share with you that I am concerned about 5G because in yeah. Atlanta, we do, have, we do have 5G turned on in parts of Atlanta right now. And um, I was listening to another show of Lightworkers and, and actually uh, Magenta Pixie actually wrote a book about this and the, the Black Box program and it was really good. And she does give a but she actually said in this interview that she she tried flower essences she tried essential oil she tried different things and she had to end up moving she could not stay where she was living i don't know where that is but somewhere mm -hmm. in uk mm -hmm. but the more that you get educated and there are a lot of there are a lot of people doing education now free webinars i recommend you do that because it's not just it's the combination of everything going on it's the smart meters on the homes it's the wireless frequencies it's even the electromagnetic coming up from the earth right 
And so a some lot. people could be in a, in a hot spot more intense than another person. But there are things you can do and uh, you can get paint and you can paint your walls. You can get a fabric and you can put the fabric uh, around your bed. The main thing you wanna do right now is you wanna make sure that your body is resting and sleeping and repairing at night. And that's the best defense that you have right now. So, you know, the 5G in my mind is, is a concern. The more people that awaken and awaken their consciousness, um, I think there's two states here in the United States that are fighting it. Um, and, you know, to do the best you can with taking care of your body. And then um, the vitamin C will help to counter effect and getting outside. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful information. And you know what? These are all things that we can actually ask our body to, you know, um, body, what do you require? You know, have more yes. of that connection and relationship with your body. But yeah, you have to get sleep. You need to sleep. You need to recharge. Yeah. Re you need to, you know, get your body strong, right? And so yes. part of that does mean going outside. It means getting fresh air. It means doing exercise. It means eating well, eat, eating better, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I remember I was taking green chlorophyll in my water like 10 years ago and people thought I was crazy. It's like, like, what is that? What's that? What's that green water you're drinking? You know, <laughs> every day it's like, well, you know, yeah. And lemon water. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many things that you can do to, um, uh, combat some of the, the stuff in your home. Like I have, um, uh, like Oregon pucks uh -huh. that I made for myself because we have a lot of Wi-Fi stuff in the house. Cause my husband's mm -hmm. a techie, right? Like, so we have a couple of servers and all that wonderful mm -hmm. stuff. So it's like, all right, what can I do? You know, so I made some of these Oregon pucks just to counteract the extra Wi-Fi, EMF, et cetera, you know? Yes. So there, there are so many, you don't have to make it, you can buy, you know, but you can, I made it. So it's like, if I can, if I, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> right. Absolutely. But it's the body, it's our physical body that's kind of under attack. Mm -hmm. you know, and in a sense, I mean, we are having a spiritual warfare here on the earth. And, you know, um, even though the light has won in the upper realms, you know, just the, it's playing out on earth. We all know that. But, you know, I don't, I'm the kind of person where I want to be very careful about not spending all my time in the higher dimensions that I forget that I'm still here in a body. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go into delusion around it. And I want to make sure that I am taking care of the body because that is, is, is super important for you to ascend with your body. Your body wants to ascend as well as you do. Your body and, is. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we chose to be here in this body form. So we, we, yes. we all have to get that. We chose to be here in this body form. We didn't have to. We could have stayed elsewhere, but we chose to be here. So if you're choosing to be here, then recognize that, acknowledge that, and, and like start working with your body so that you can ascend, so that you can create. Because the thing is, you can't create anything in life without the body. Everything happens through the body, with the body, right? right? So if you want to create yep. whatever, it's through the body. So recognize yes. the importance of the body and that you chose it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying this for everybody else, but it's also for myself. There have been many times where I was like, why the heck am I here? Why the heck did I choose this body? Why the <laughs> heck? You know, it's like, oh my God, what was wrong with me when I had, when I made that choice, you know? So, you know, I get it. Right. But, you know, once you acknowledge that, yeah, I chose to be here. I chose to have this body, this particular body. So, all right, let's work together and create what we want. Right. And so exactly. part of that has to do with, with keeping it healthy, you know, like, not just maintenance, but, you know, body, what is fun for you? Like, what would you like to do? So like I was saying earlier, before we went live, we went out into the woods in, you know, outside the city and we went for a walk in the woods and it was like, oh my God, so beautiful. And so like, you know, hearing the birds and it was sunny and it was warm and oh my God, it was like, it was so great. And, you know, I, when we came back, both me and my husband, we both said, oh, that was exactly what we needed. But now that we're back in the city, back at home, my, my, my head is hurting again. My neck is hurting again. All this stuff is happening again. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we were walking, 
absolutely no pain, no nothing. We're just like enjoying, right? So the body right. needs that, right? Body absolutely. wants that. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we talk about walking barefoot, mm -hmm. hugging a tree, but you know, that right there is super important. That will help to create that, you know, reset the electromagnetic field, you know, with the negative ions. And that's probably what happened when you were out walking too. Yeah. yeah. And so we're, we were looking at a property. So we, now that we were there and the woods were so wonderful, it's like, yeah, I think we're probably going <laughs> to get it, you know, we'll have to see, but uh, we were looking, you know, so it's like, yeah, we need it. We need it because there's just yes. so much, you know, stuff that we do that we need that downtime we need that rejuvenation we need you know we need that help you know from the woods yes. and etc yeah absolutely nice. absolutely and our bodies are becoming more conscious as we become conscious and it's yeah. so important that we heal the relationship with our body david for exactly what you were saying to manifest it's like a partnership and we've been so unconscious for so many thousands of years you know and now we're becoming conscious again, that we can really begin to listen to our bodies, hear our body's wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and, and take our body's guidance. Yeah. And to, that to me, that's just part of finding your truth as well, because everybody is different. And we cannot just partner with the divine team. We cannot, that's not enough because they can right. give us support, give us energy, you know, yep. give us ideas, et cetera, but we and the body, we still have to do the work here. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, yeah, absolutely so important. And uh, as part of my own shift back in November, I completely changed my eating. Um, I was eating uh, not a lot of sugar, but I was eating too many carbs. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, if you look at our cultures, they're very, very carb driven, right? And um, or starch and so I completely changed to modified fasting and pretty much I, I've gone you know switched over to a fat burning and it has been wonderful for my body I've dropped 30 pounds and I'm like my body is so happy because you know and getting much healthier now mm -hmm. so that you know this ascension can, can continue so you know that was just you know just the whole keto thing was like a surprise to me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. You know, and modified fasting is a super great way to heal. So if you're going through some healing crises or, you know, issues with the body, I would highly recommend that you look into it to a modified fasting and to really just begin to journal with your body and asking her, your body, Deva, what kind of food does she want? Because mine certainly told me exactly what she wanted and that just happened to be, you know, kind of like a keto diet. Mm -hmm. So there's great wisdom there in that partnership. And when you begin to really heal that partnership and begin to allow her to speak to you, you know, through the voice of your womb for women and, um, you know, begin to pay attention to what she wants and what her needs are again, that's when you're going to really be able to come back into being able to manifest and create those hearts desires. Cause just as you pointed out without our body, we can't manifest here <laughs> yeah. in this physical realm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So, um, uh, I don't know where are we at? My goodness. We've been talking about so many wonderful things, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think we're down into the co-partnering with your divine team and body Deva and, what I'd like to do is, is take everyone through a healing meditation, if you'd like. Sure. Um, we love me, healing meditations. Okay. <laughs> so let me, um, yeah, I'll just invite everyone now to close your eyes and begin to connect in with your heart. And we'll just take a moment to, yeah, breathe. And that, allow yourself to open, you know, opening up your heart space, opening up that flow. Just begin to imagine a river of light flowing from the top of your head all the way down the front of your spine and out your root chakra, taking a deep breath in. Now, as you're breathing in more deeply and slowing down the breath, imagine pulling yourself into this beautiful waterfall of light. And you're getting really comfortable inside the light. 
snuggling up to the front of your spine, taking another deep breath so that you're just enclosed in this beautiful river of light, this waterfall of your own beautiful light. And you're beginning to perceive the world through this column of light. And now I'm just gonna give some command and you can follow along with me if you like, or just follow along with the energy. I ask my higher self to work with my energetic fields in the higher self of my body, Deva, to energetically locate my divine line. And we're just gonna pause and we're gonna allow the higher selves to do the work in the higher realm. And I ask my higher self and the higher self of my body, Deva, to work with my energetic fields to pull all my awareness off of everyone and everything and to bring it to my divine line. I ask my higher self to firmly attach my divine line to the front of my spine. And just take a moment for that to happen. And now I invite my higher self and the higher self of my body, Deva, to work with my energetic fields to update all my reference points and ways of perceiving as you continue to bring all of your focus as much as you can into that beautiful river of light flowing up and down your spine. Resetting your Hora line so that it's perfectly straight and connected in to your I am connection. And now we're going to reset your soul blueprint to activate your soul truth and divine sovereignty and to bring these vibrations into your body now to your physical experience. I invite my higher self to work with my energetic fields and the guides to locate my divine soul blueprint And remember, we're giving these commands as your higher self, not from your brain. I invite my higher self to activate and infuse the, inf the vibrations of wholeness, love, light, joy, peace, compassion, in my divine line and activating these frequencies of the Christ consciousness within my divine soul blueprint now. And just take a deep breath, holding the awareness your higher self is now doing the work in the higher realms. And use your imagination or just sense these qualities are now being sparked and activated and ignited now flowing down your divine line, they're being infused into your energetic blueprint as they're awakening your crystalline light body, your divine soul blueprint. Imagine all of that now being reflected down into your physical realm, into your physical experience. Beautiful, and take a deep breath in. Letting all that come in and just flow. Just activating, aligning, making shifts and adjustments wherever it's needed in your body to be in a total alignment with holding that higher frequency of the Christ consciousness. Become activated as your true self. So just taking a deep breath in and out. And now we're gonna also work with your team for a moment. So you inv I invite my higher self to work with my energetic fields and the guides to connect with the higher selves of my team members. 
just pause and take a breath and invite your team to huddle around you in the higher realm. You can imagine them or see them or sense them as a group or individuals. I ask that my team, which is of love and light, to surround me at the level of my higher self. I ask that each member of my team at the level of their higher selves to work with their energetic fields and the guides to connect with their own divine lines and to remember their own true essence. And now they're connecting with their divine lines. You may feel an increase in the flow or pressure on the crown chakra or however it's coming in through you. I ask that each member of my team at the level of their higher selves work with their energetic fields and the guides to connect with their own divine lines and to remember their own true essence. I invite my team members to remember their agreement to support, buffer, and model a positive energy to me as I journey in this world. So just take a breath and relax. We want our team to fully remember their agreement is they're part of our higher team of light to support us while we're here in the physical. And I invite my team members at the level of their higher selves to work with their energetic fields and the guides to hold love, gentleness, and support in their own divine line. So just take a breath right now. And you might feel shifts or lightness or energies that are readjusting in the body. And we'll just let that continue, continue to breathe and soften and relax to receive it. And now we're gonna do a protocol to move you into abundance. I invite the higher selves of me, my body Deva and my team to work with the energetic fields and the guides to dissolve all vibrations of lack off all aspects of me, my body Deva and my team using sacred sounds light and vibrations of abundance. I ask for an activation of the vibrations of abundance, flow and support in the divine lines and at the level of the higher selves of me, my body Deva and my team. Together as one unit, we hold the vibrations of support, abundance, Trust and flow is a way of mastering abundance into this earthly reality now for the purpose of supporting our higher missions. And purpose with clarity and confidence that the people in the resources and everything that we need is being provided for at the divine right timing we need it. And take a breath in. And I'm going to bring through some light language to seal that. <laughs> So just take a moment, let all that move through the body is waves and waves of expansion. 
moving all the way down into every cell, every space in between, into the waves and the particles. Now resetting your own sacred geometry and frequency and vibration, expanding that into holding more of your true love and light vibration, your own soul's truth, which is your divine blueprint with clarity and confidence, knowing that you are always guided by your higher divine self and teams of light. And now anchoring those sacred codes of light now coming in or activating and awakening your heart, your mission, your purpose, providing you with clarity, opening up your spiritual gifts, opening you up to more resources so that you can move forward with 100% confidence in the divine plan that you are part of to embody your true self and to awaken your true self. And it is safe to do so. And let's remove any programming that's saying it's not safe to do so. And I'm gonna ask your highest guides to come in. Archangel Michael's gonna cut any cords and remove any programming from your mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual in all directions of time and space, past, present, future. Take a deep breath in and just allow Archangel Michael to take that from you and take it back to source to be recycled back into pure love. Untether your soul. You are untethered. You are free. You are free. You are free. And I'm just going to end with a prayer. Uh, this is one of my prayers that was brought to me from St. Germain. So just began by connecting with the energy of St. Germain, bringing in the violet flame. Begin to anchor that violet flame within your own beautiful heart into that sacred heart space. Allow it to begin to move in a counterclockwise flow, moving throughout your body and your being and your aura. Allowing the violet flame now to bring you into this new space in place, this new vibration, vibrating at the crown chakra. I am a sovereign divine being of love and light in my own right. I fully claim my divine inheritance now is decreed by heaven above. All my power is fully activated now. I am holy of the holies. Pure divine light fills me now. I embrace my divinity and merge with my soul light, becoming one with thee. In truth, no separation exists, only that thine light can be. Shine forth my great light. I claim all of thee. I claim all of thee. I claim all of thee. So be it, and so it is. Amen, amen, amen. So just breathing in and out. Feeling the bliss, the joy, the activation, the tingling. Your power is rising. You, beloved, are the chosen one. You may not think that, but it is true. You are the radiant light. You are part of the one source, God, goddess, creatix, all of is. Reclaim your light, reclaim your love with confidence, with authority, with the knowledge that you are totally supported in all ways you are heaven you are earth let it be so you are the pillar of light let it be so bring this prayer to you now claim it now and it is so 
It is so, it is so. Amen, amen, amen. So just take a deep breath in everyone and feeling, bringing the energy all the way down to your feet. Just feeling rejuvenated, feeling cleansed and cleared and strong, confident. This is the new programming. This is your new upgraded software to the fifth dimension. It was decreed for you and by you as you walk confidently into the light that you are. Know this with all of your being, for it is so. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh. So, ooh, I'm flying high now. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Wow. How's everybody doing? You're welcome. Drink some water or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll take a few deep breaths, everyone. How is how's everyone doing? Wow. Yeah. I'm still trying to <sighs> come back you. here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Woo. Uh yeah, yeah radiating so I'd love to, light. Just radiating light. light. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that um, the Marys have really been talking to me about for two years, and and one of the thing aha moments I had was, you know, we we've really developed so much of you know our, our upper chakras and 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 every and that was you know part of the the plan, but now. It's, we've got to come and bring the energy down to the first, second, and third chakras, mm -hmm. you know, and it was interesting to me because that's where I started. My original healing work was in the first, second, and third to open up the heart. And now we are returning to the first, second, and third to upgrade those and to really bring the energy right all the way down into the body and to really bring the body back, you know, to merging with our divine light codes of our divine essence. and. So this is where the work is right now is um and, and what I what's been shared with me is really those first, second, and third chakras and you know what's getting blasted right now, that first chakra, right? All about security and mm -hmm. you know, the you know, all that tribal stuff. And so one thing I will share is that if you are feeling anxious, if you're feeling like restless or you can't really ground, I would check into having your adrenals tested. And uh, because the adrenals, my God shared with me, this is really interesting that when we were in the womb of our mothers, the matrix, I'll just call it the matrix <laughs> system, it actually started to connect with um, taking our light taking our energy away through our adrenals and it's like a big fear machine and the adrenals were hooked into it you know we didn't know any of this of course and so if you feel like if you've ever had those feelings of like I'm, I'm giving away my light I'm giving away my essence I'm giving away my you know in an unbalanced way you know to whether you had family members or friends or people you might you know who were negative or narcissistic or you know very you know selfish or kind of almost vampiring I don't like that word on the energy but you know then address those feelings and take your power back mm -hmm. take your power back and fully take it back and if there's an impact on your body it's probably going to show up in the adrenals and, and actually when our adrenals begin to get over out of balance and out of whack that actually sets us on a course of our digestive system being impacted in negative ways. And this is, this is unfolding and awakening uh, that came to me because my own adrenals were getting impacted in childhood. I didn't know that of course, but if you're struggling with digestive issues or any issues of the organs, you know, get your adrenals checked. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I know it's hard right now to, for in, in many places to get any medical 
testing or do anything with uh, with doctors, you know, mm-hmm. right now. But when you can, <laughs> <laughs> like when you can. Yeah, or just you know, do a simple kinesiology, you know, and ask your body, and your body will tell you, you know, do I have a problem with my adrenals, yes or no? And what supplements can I take? And you can just, you know, actually break, go to the store and test the supplements mm-hmm. to see if you need them and your body will tell you. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's usually pretty accurate, you know, because we're, we're in tune enough. We're very mm-hmm. intuitive and empathic and, um, you know, we can do that for ourselves and we can kind of create, you know, again, it's just really getting to listen to your body and your body's wisdom and asking your body what she wants, what she needs, supplements, food, exercise, play, um, all of that is so important. And, and the other thing too, that came to my attention is don't try to over control her. She does not want to be over controlled. And I'm not saying that every, I'm not saying that anyone's doing this, but I'm just saying that with the energies of control have been such a huge dynamic that we're all working through on this planet to control us that the body almost, you know, because she is her own sentient being, you know, just kind of check in, just check in and make sure you're giving her space. In other words, you're giving her space, you're giving her love to let her be playful, creative, um, you know, again, just partnering with her is the word. Mm-hmm partner with her (laughs) don't try to dominate her force her pressure her um because you know in 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 a way she's already under attack because if they can take your body out then they can take you out of the ascension and i'm not saying that's going to happen but i'm what i'm saying is that these a lot of our food and our water being tainted the emf you know all of these things are not certainly supporting our bodies so Mm -hmm is we all know that. Um, And, you know, even doing, growing your own food if you can, or going to a local farmer's market, I think I will just leave this as a tip, Alara, because I am getting uh, my own gifts of prophecy and seership are coming online. And I haven't really spoken much about that because Honestly, that's one of my own fears for getting killed for it in many lifetimes. But Mm -hmm. as I carry the Mary energy, that is part of the Mary gifts. So, but what I will share is in one of my client sessions, um, she lives on like a 70 acre farm way out in the middle of Wisconsin or somewhere. And what came through very clearly was that as our gifts are activated, uh, her gift is around growing food and herbs and gardening and uh, doing, you know, medicinal herbs and working with all that. But she will actually be growing food for her community and guiding other people to learn how to grow their own food. So even if you live in the city, you can, I think it's either Ikea or I don't know, maybe Amazon, you can get your own like little mini garden system that you can bring into your home and you can begin to grow things like lettuce and things like that Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to put it out there because my own guide showed me that the way I would be living in the future would be on having my own eggs so having chickens having my own eggs and having my own garden and you know, as these 3D structures continue to change and and decline, you know, food could become an issue possibly. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's going to because our president is is already very well aware of this. Is why the funding is going back to the farmers in the United States, so we can begin to beef up the farms to provide food for the country. But um not to scare anyone. I'm not trying to bring up fear. I'm just trying to help to educate just to be aware and be conscious and, you know, maybe start to shop at a farmer's market or, you know, a farm. And yeah. Have- and there are some simple things you can do at home. Like we started um, growing mm-hmm. our own microgreens and sprouts, you know, here, mm-hmm. and it was so easy. It's like, oh my God, so easy. Tastes so good. So fresh, you know, 
yeah. so many more nutrients than what you would get at the store, you know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So we can all start to do little things like that for ourselves, for our health, for our body, right? Absolutely. And it will make you feel so empowered mm -hmm. and it will make you feel good about, oh yeah, I can actually do this. You know, I can do this. It's not hard. Like you're saying. Yeah. It's simple. I mean, you can even do it on a back deck. We're doing mm -hmm. it on a back deck. Mm -hmm. And you got sun and water and you got your fertilizer and your seeds and you're good. And you're good. It's easy. <laughs> I mean, like we, we're in an apartment, so we don't even have a backyard. We don't have a deck. We, you know, mm -hmm. but, and we, and we were able to do it and it was so yummy. Oh my God. It's like, yeah. So I was just telling my husband, it's like, yeah, we need to, we need to do some more now. You know, I think mm -hmm. um, we, we needed to get more of the, I don't know, something, you know, so now that the stores, the um, uh, garden centers are open again here, mm -hmm. you know, now we can go and get some, you know, but it's like, it's, it's so easy. And if we can do it, if I can do it, it's like, yeah, you can do it. Caroline, did you want to add something to that? Not to that. I keep hearing to mention something to Laura. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because she's already answered uh, quite a few things that were coming through where I was hearing what was coming, but I lowered my hand and then, and then, so during the meditation, hi, Laura. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Uh, during the meditation, uh, heaven, heaven is what it was like. Um, all the vibrations and feeling everything inside my body and all of a sudden mm -hmm. it landed in my root chakra. And a vision came where where I was there was water in front of me and rocks and I mm -hmm. dove I I um, plunged in so that's what they're telling me to to mention to you so I don't know why but yeah mm -hmm. they keep bringing that through to to mention it here yeah it's time to dive in mm -hmm. you know it's it's like that's stop standing well. stop standing on the deck stop standing at the shore time to dive in to whatever it is that you're creating, whatever it is that you want to create your life, you know? So that's what, I think that's, that's what I'm getting for that, for that message. That's how mm -hmm. I'm interpreting it. Mm -hmm. I got that as well. And then, and then I lowered my hand and then it said, <laughs> yeah, so I'm back. Yeah because, yeah, because this is something that we all need to hear that mm. this is the time to, mm -hmm. instead of stepping back and saying, maybe, maybe not, I'm scared. I'm this or that. No, jump in, dive in, just take that plunge. Right. And trust. Absolutely. Take the plunge and go for it. Yeah. Which is and what this lady's saying, Lilia. Yeah. That was her message. Go for it. Own exactly. it. Exactly. Go yep. for it, you know, and you're going to be totally supported because we're here to create the new earth. Is yeah. women, our wombs are being fine, you know, our bodies are being healed and, and brought back to wholeness. And, and so the codes can come in and we're being fine tuned you know, to carry, I mean, big waves of light. And with this light coming in is new information, new information. So be willing so, to receive, right? Be yep. open and willing to receive and then go ahead and go for it. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you, Caroline. That was spot yeah. on. <laughs> that was. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love the whole diving into the water too, because I'm a yeah. big water person. Me too. Same. Even in the meditation, something came where I, I think I thought for a second, I'm just going to jump in. And it was like, no, you're diving in, diving in head first. So yeah. 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 Good. Awesome. Consciously diving, consciously diving into the water. Yeah. Yeah. I love yes. it. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Love that. Thank you. <laughs> love that. Awesome. All right. Um, so one second. So Dave Rodney had a question. And so this is something that I was perceiving at the very beginning when the call first started was, I, you know, I could, couldn't talk, you know, for a little bit. So she says, I have a feeling of restriction in my throat. Sometimes I can't breathe properly. Why is this? And so um, I'll let you um, share, Laura, but sometimes mm -hmm. when the energy is coming in, it's actually clearing up your throat chakra so that you can speak. But then it's still up to us to choose to speak. Correct. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, correct. I'm going to bring a little light language through through that to help everyone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so she says, 
So everybody breathe in, breathe out. So what was I, I was seeing a, a strange octagon type of, I don't know, around the neck, but it was, uh, it was like, it was this, the light language was giving space around our necks, around our throat chakra, so that we can actually channel more of the frequencies and the light through us because the throat chakra is the fifth dimension. It is divine will. It is where we bring heaven to earth, you know, literally through the fifth chakra and aligning with that. So for a lot of us as empathers and intuitives, we've done quite a bit of work and are still working to unlock that mm -hmm. chakra. Um, so what they were doing is they were actually clearing and cleansing, but actually kind of widening the throat a bit is what I got mm -hmm. of clear space. Uh, yeah. And because it's interesting when you can unlock the throat chakra and speak your truth with confidence and clarity and speaking our truth is so huge, right? Yeah. Um, then you're, you're being prepared to unlock the fourth lock, which is the womb which is unlocking your womb and really being able to bring through even, you know, it's not just higher frequencies. It's like increasing the flow of bringing in the seeds from the divine mind of God and actually having those seeds germ germinate and then be, you know, birthed into the mm -hmm. world, bir birthing new ideas, new, new light structure. So that, because our wombs as women, you know, the womb is tied into the womb of the world. So we're in the current old womb, if you will, you know, the world that we created through the collective consciousness over all these thousands of years. And so as you unravel those patterns in your own womb and you clear out those old matrix energies, you know, the beliefs, the thoughts, the entanglements with others, those matrix energies, then you're going to open up to uh, clearing so that you can receive these new energy frequencies that are being anchored into the ley lines of Mother Earth. And, you know, the, the, the womb of Mother Earth, of the new Earth, you're being anchored into the new Earth and into the new chakra system of the new Earth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keep working on that fifth chakra. Keep opening that because when you're able to speak your truth with clarity, with confidence, and walk it, then you're going to be, you're being prepared really to open up this fourth gateway to the womb of the world. Yeah. So hopefully that helps there, Ronnie. And Angela asked a, a, a similar type of question about that. Should I have about a, a regular wheezing sound from the throat chakra? I don't know what, I don't know what, what you mean by regular, but. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting like the wheezing is kind of like a straining on the throat. I'm straining to speak my truth. I'm straining to speak my truth through the wheezing. Um, it, it, it's like there's just a strain there. So um, let me ask, what can we? So what they're showing me is Angela for her to write to begin writing out because if, if she keeps, she doesn't want to force it to come before it's ready to open. We don't want to, you know, we want to, they're showing me where she, if she just writes down her truth and what she wants to say, but yet she doesn't feel quite ready to be able to speak it yet. But so just write it out on paper mm -hmm. where she can feel more safe. And then if she gives it voice to paper, it's going to then help to clear this up with the straining and then she can then transition into beginning to feel safe enough to speak her truth. Okay, cool. Awesome. And now yeah. Sue has a question. Do you see me leaking energy in my back? It comes and goes psychic attack. Yes, I, I do. I do feel like there is um, a hook in your back. It feels like it's uh, in the middle of the back. Mm. It feels like someone is hooked into you and they're almost trying to keep you from moving forward on your path. Like they've got you hooked in the energy. 
and they're holding a rope to it and they're like, oh no, you can't go forward because you can't go without me. I don't know who that is. Um, I would just, I would definitely pray and, and create an intention statement and bring in Archangel Michael and your team and just do a ceremony because they cannot go against your divine will and reclaim your divine sovereignty. You could even use this prayer or if you have your own prayer, bring in the um, St. Germain and the violet flame and begin to clear and cleanse away forgiveness around yourself and this person. I want to say it's your mother, but I'm not sure if that's right. But it feels like it might be your mother or a female figure. And, and also speak to their higher self that it's your birthright to move forward and that they'll be divinely taken care of and that you are, they have to remove the hook and that you're removing the hook and send their energy back to them and make sure you bring all your energy back to you and have Archangel Michael come in to assist with removing the hook and then use the ho ho pono um, and the violet flame to do the, the forgiveness work. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Um, so I think you know how to do this. It's just like creating your own ceremony, but you know, it is something we could do in a session too, if you need some assistance with that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Now, Lara has a question. She said, yesterday in, in meditative state, a very beautiful goddess appeared and I heard Arara. Who is she? What is her message? <laughs> that might be something for you to find out, but let's see what Laura has to say. <laughs> okay. How did she spell that? Arara? Yeah, A-U-R-A-R-A. Yeah, I'm hitting I'm hearing goddess of wisdom. She isn't like one of the most well-known goddesses, but um she is a, the goddess of wisdom. And she's there to represent and help you to really activate your goddess wisdom within um your body. Uh just really uh you know, it's it's like <laughs> They're showing me she's like the, you know, if you've seen that picture of the Christ and, and, and Mary Magdalene with the gold, kind of like halo or like sun with the, the spikes going out. Oh, she is, okay, the goddess of wisdom. She, And she is a goddess, you know, that embodies the Christ uh, consciousness, the divine feminine Christ consciousness, too. So she's there to work with you, to help you to embody that, and, uh, and to take you through the marriage of Heros Gamas with the divine masculine and the feminine. So she's going to be there to guide you through that. And to help you through that. Wow. Awesome. Hmm. Awesome. Good. She's Not like, wow. sure about yeah, the spelling. Like bright light. Yeah, very, very bright golden light. Um, I'm not sure about the spelling, but it doesn't really matter. It's just that, you know, the goddess energies as they return to the planet, and it's kind of like what's been happening in sessions with the clients, is they'll come into the session and make themselves known, and then they'll begin to want to let my uh, client know, you know, who, who they are and that they're to reconnect with them because they're gifting them their energy. Mm -hmm. They're overlaying their energy field with those gifts and it's time to activate that relationship, you know, with that goddess so they can work with you directly. So yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's, yeah, it's awesome. Good, Lara. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Laura, I want to take a few minutes to talk about your special offer that mm -hmm. you have this time for us. So for those of you who are on the live page, you can just click on special offer. Those of you who are not, you can go to alara a wow, alara.at forward slash show forward slash Laura four. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. Oh, hold on. Oh, so, goodness. Oh, I can't even click on anything here either. It's like that. 
All right, so I have it open on my computer, but I'm just gonna share the link just in case somebody needs it in the chat. All right. No, I cannot. I love that how sometimes this computer doesn't let me do anything I want it to. I have it here in front okay. of me. Awesome. Um, package A uh, is a four week live journey to create your new angelic goddess self, new earth prayer, I call it. So what came to me, I just did a survey and uh, there were people in my community that really would like some guidance. And I thought it'd be great to offer here on your show to create this new program. Uh, a four week live class with me where we will meet on Zoom video. And I'm gonna guide you through getting really, uh, getting clarity around your mission, your purpose. Um, you know, we're gonna create like a roadmap. I'm not calling it a vision board. It's not gonna be a vision board, but it's gonna be like, I'm gonna have, you know, a whole organized template, if you will, questions. And we'll open the Akashic Records too. We'll bring in, the divine feminine guides and your angels and your guides and you know really really get clear on what is your next spiritual steps what you're here to do what you really want to do after COVID-19 so to speak um, and so we will do some you know some of the processes I, I kind of shared with you today I have more of those work with your body Dave and bring her in your team your guides activate your blueprints and we'll work on the blueprint of your spiritual mission. And then we'll do some um, healing and clearing as well. Um, let's see, what else did I have in here? Uh, you know, what your new life is going to look like, because, you know, we know we're not going back to the normal. We know that. We know mm -hmm. that we're making these adjustments. And, um, you know, for many client sessions, I've gotten where this is a very pivotal time with these new, with these energies continuing to come in for us to kind of get where we're going over the next 10 years, we're kind of laying the groundwork. I mean, we know we're all here to do soul embodiment, but you know, what is, what does that look like for you personally? So create your personal earth angel map, including your I am core statement, define and clarify your personal role. We're going to activate your spiritual gifts to the next level with light language activation. Um, I'm going to bring in your goddess archetype, what goddess you're to work with or goddesses, uh, what gifts. We'll look at that. And then um, I'm also going to bring in a, an, uh, another activation. I call it the three waves of stability activation that Archangel Michael brought to me, and we'll do that. And it just stabilizes your whole, uh, your true self, your inner child, and your body, Deva, to work together. Um, let's see what else. I've just kind of jam-packed in here a lot of stuff Alara. Yeah, there's a lot i know right i'm like how are you gonna do all of that in four weeks but it's like okay <laughs> well i usually i mean it would probably be more like two hours for our classes because i like to give a lot of value and it's just fun i want to have yeah. fun and i want it to be light and playful and i want it to be fun for people but yet we can get some real good clarity around this and we can really create you know a foundation for you yeah it looks like a really really fun Fun program. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. I think I'm going to join. I'm going to join. This is something awesome. I, I want to do. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You know, we're going to, I don't know, we'll bring the fairies in and cards and do some music, some dance. You know, I just want it to be fun and light. Yeah. yeah. It's we need that. We all need that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then there's two bonuses. And then there's package B, which is everything in package A plus a divine soul DNA activate your soul's mission and gift session. Talk about that. Yeah, so I've got that. Uh, I've been, I can't, no, it's not scrolling down. Where'd it go? Okay, I may have lost that. But anyway, um, it, you know, it's a special uh, activation that I take you through with your guides and, you know, we bring into that to activate your next level of spiritual gifts. We get clarity a bit about your gifts. You can ask any questions. So I think it'll be a nice compliment to this class because we'll mm -hmm. go through the class or you can have your session if you want before the class, whichever you want to do. And we're just going to you know, again, just do some activation, some attunements, you know, whatever your guides want to bring you through to get you into alignment with, you know, feeling really good and really strong and, and getting your frequencies activated, whatever you need to really get a strong foundation um, to moving you forward. 
Mm -hmm. And so package A was $97 and package B mm -hmm. is 144. Right. <laughs> and you know, I, I put 30 minutes in there, but I, I, I don't ever stick to that in the sense that I'm not going to, you know, the guide will go, we'll go maybe to an hour or whatever you need and, right. you know, kind of thing, because it's important you get what you need. And yeah. I like to give a lot of value for what I'm doing. So Caroline says, I'm in. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Oh my goodness. She always buys a package before, <laughs> right away. <laughs> awesome. Love it. I, I'm in too. Yeah, definitely. Yay. It's like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, it's not, you know, like what I like about this too is about it's, uh, it's fun, you know, it's light, but it's also very expansive, you know, and it's, and it, it is going to move you forward. She says, I dove. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? It's also very expansive and uh, it's very empowering and supportive as well. Right. So it's like, it's, you know, it feels like this is for a lot of people, this is what they need a little bit of a push, a little bit of a support, a little bit of empowerment mm -hmm. to help them connect with what they want to do next. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I really felt this very strongly because I've had so many people in sessions of, they weren't sure, you know, and we've, we're gone through this reset. I mean, we're going through this reset and this is a great time to dial in to see, well, maybe you do want to make a shift in a job or maybe you do want to start your healing business mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever it is, you know, we'll, we'll get clarity for you and dive in. I think in. it starts, Patricia's asking when does it start? I think it's May, I was going to say May something, but yeah, because since this is the last day of April, so it's definitely May something. Um, let's see, I think I put the dates here, May 6th. Yeah, May 6th. So yeah. about a week out, and I think I put it on a Wednesday, because Wednesday at three o'clock, so for people who are in Europe or whatever. So I can't they, do my show at that time. <gasps> it's okay. Oh, it is that. Oh, no. It's Okay. <laughs> Well, I could, I could, I could, I could change that, out. Alara. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out. It's okay. On that one day of the week, I'll, you know, I'll just move the speaker to another time later in the I day. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even think about that, but I'm totally open and flexible to move it. So yeah, we could, okay. we could make it one o'clock or something. I, you know, that wouldn't be, I don't think too early for people on the West coast. Yeah. Caroline, what uh, were you going to say? Yeah. yeah. Is there, sorry, I'm just going to put this out there. I, I can feel someone's heart really, really wanting um, mm -hmm. to join and money is, is a real issue. So if that's the case and you're hearing this right now, can you speak up right this second? Because I, I would like to buy you the package. Oh, Caroline, that's the second time you've done that. Oh, <laughs> it's very sweet. So if somebody yeah. would like to buy the book, the package, but does not have the money to buy the package and would like to participate in the program fully, let us know now and we'll work it out. Colette is raising her hand. Oh, that's really, really <laughs> sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I've, I've already bought a pocket package. Alara, do you want me to just buy another one? Yeah, well, yeah. Whether it's... Uh, one second. Colette, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you one second. That is so sweet. I was like, oh my God. Go that ahead. is awesome. That is really, really awesome. Can go ahead, hear? Colette. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I've been listening and I've been, um, yes, and I don't want to miss your three o'clock show. So when things fall at the same time as you, Alara, you know, <laughs> um, thank you, Laura. Laura, you're my uh, Facebook friend. We pretty much share all the same people and posts and stuff. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, you'll see me. I'm, I'm going to talk to you after any uh, on one year. Okay. You'll see me. I appreciate that. I'm not working at all. My clients, of course, I can't go see them or ha right. have them come to me. And um, That's and true. I really it sounds like so much fun. I'd like some fun. Um, I was going to actually raise my hand before, but I lied down. I lied down when you did that process. Yeah, was no, that's this. awesome, Colette. Fine. So, yeah. wow, Caroline, that is so so nice of you. Thank so you generous. Caroline. That is so sweet. That is so nice. Well, let me ask right now: um, yes. if we move the class to one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, would that work for everyone? Fine by me. I'm not going for, anywhere. It works for me. <laughs> okay. Why don't we just move it to one o'clock? And I, Caroline, how's that for you? Okay. Um, yeah, just I'm, I'm down. Yeah, that works out. I can do that. So I can. I'll have to arrange it, but yeah. 
Are you sure you can? Okay, because you're the one that's paying, so whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can either move it till one o'clock or we can move it to a little bit later. I mean, you let's, know. Let's I'm, do later. Yeah, can, we, that, can okay. we do 4.30 or 5? That would yeah. work better for me. Yeah. Okay, you want to do 5, five o'clock? Let's oh, do 5. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. wonderful. All yeah. right, we'll do 5, and Alara can join us and. And uh, I'll make this five o'clock and yeah, go with five. I just updated the sheet and I'll update it in the uh, Dropbox. Awesome. Are you, you got my email, Laura. Are you going to send all that? Or? Yep. Send me, your, send me your email again, Colette, and I will, I will get that over to you. Okay. okay. So and I'm you too, Caroline. I will get my name, right? Yeah, because yeah. I, I didn't write down the date on this yet because I was lying down before. Yeah. So no I worries. We'll, we'll send you no all worries. the info. <laughs> oh. Thank Yay. you. That's the Yay. best thing you could do for me. Thank you. Thank you. Aww. Caroline is so generous. She is definitely an earth angel and a goddess of love. Absolutely. Yes, she oh, is. Thank you, Caroline. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Love, Can't love wait. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was a surprise. So thank you. Awesome. Um, all right, so where, where were we? So Angela says, that is awesome, Caroline. Blessings and congratulations, Colette. Yes, definitely. Okay, so Laura, where were we now? Whew. So, um, well, let me just see however much time we have. Um, I can either share, I have a, a something that came through Archangel Michael, if you'd like for me to share that too. For everyone, this is, uh, was asking about the coronavirus and then what we could do to prevent getting it or um so or do, this is or what, do you want to take some more questions from people? i can take more questions too yeah whatever let's do that so if anybody okay, okay. <laughs> if anybody has any questions for laura that you haven't already asked raise your hand or type them in the chat okay and if you can't raise your hand just unmute yourself i'll be nice today <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be generous and nice today. So go ahead. We have like, you know, just a few, uh, 15 more minutes um, only because, you know, my butt gets sore sitting in this chair. But if you have a question, <laughs> Caroline, do you have a question? <laughs> and anybody else, if you have a question for Laura. Let me think. Oh, okay. All these numbers that we're seeing, Laura, mm. the triple numbers, even the other day even was, was five, five fives. Mm -hmm. And every time I feel them and, and every time I see them and, and on, on license plates and everywhere, I get this vibration in my body and it's just, it just feels like blessings, blessings, but just, yeah, maybe speak about that. Mm -hmm. Specifically the five, 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 or just um, any of I see the 444 four, four all the time. I see 222. Two, two. Yeah, those are the angelic codes yeah. of light, and they're activating those um, angelic vibrations. Because, you know, we feel it now because we yeah. are activating the seven chakras at the fifth dimensional level. So, you know, our body is like the Tibetans call it the, the rainbow body, where all of the chakras everywhere in every picture that i take i even got a mm. rainbow smiling yeah <laughs> yes. nice yeah. yeah so um yeah that's exactly you know when you see all that it just it's just, it's just like the universe reflecting back this is this is what's happening your vibration is beginning to you know anchor into your body at that frequency it's a beautiful sign i love it i get those too and 555 is change a lot of you know change 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 and 444 is an angelic vibration so is 222 Four 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 is the divine feminine frequency. Two two two, the partnership. I don't. I don't know all of them. I think there's a website you can go to, and you can that gives yeah. the meanings to them. Um, yeah. So just yeah, enjoy them. But if, them. if nothing else, it takes you out of your head, and it, it makes you become present. You know. Mm -hmm. And that too. Yeah. It makes you become present, and then you can actually in that moment take a deep breath and say, "Oh, what am I focusing on? What am I thinking about right now?" Mm -hmm. and come back to your heart space come back to either your body your heart space or you know raise your vibration because sometimes you know we get stuck in a thought pattern and then we see that one 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 and it unsticks us right yes i was going to say yeah pay attention to the thought patterns too at the time you're seeing them and what you're doing 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When I found it's four for four now. Two. Each says. Yeah, it Sorry. is. When I saw a two 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 one day, I was at the beach last sa uh, last Saturday, and we were walking, and this is what I found. Nice. Mm. At my feet at a beach I never go to, and then wow. a few days later, this was at another rock. Wow. And buried in the ground, wow. I always put that on it. So it's just that's beautiful. So much. It's so beautiful. And both packages are purchased. Okay, Laura. Awesome. Thank you. I'll take a look at it after the love, call. Love, love. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so Arietta had a question way back when that I didn't, I totally missed. So I'm going to try and see if I can go back and find it, Arietta. Okay. And I don't understand it, so I don't know. It says, request past incarnation. The man says, sensitivity to chemicals triggered around a traumatic event at age 14. The girl frozen in fear, shock of some kind. Can you please clear that energy, the trigger, the fear, and the shock aspect of me? Is that... I mean, I'll let you answer that. It's like, I don't know if that girl is you or was that somebody else? I have no idea. The way it's written. Yeah, so Arietta, just take a moment to breathe and bring your hand to your heart. I, I want you to speak to this girl, this younger version of yourself in a previous incarnation going back several incarnations looks like 33 27 as you are evolving on your soul's journey and so the the chemicals are kind of just an you know a symbol of feeling your soul feeling attacked feeling like you can't be your true self you can't radiate your light without being attacked so i want you to just now reach out to this young girl embrace her Look her in the eyes or, or take her hands. And I want you to tell her that you love her and that she's safe. And that you are in this lifetime, that you're handling things and you're taking care of her. This is really like your inner child. And you just need to reassure her that you're the parent, right? And that you're looking out for her. You're not going to let anything happen to her. She's totally loved. She's totally safe. And send love from your heart to her heart. Tell her how much you love her. Now, I see your angelic goddess self coming behind the little girl to hold her. And just embrace her in this bubble of love. Now she's turning around and she's embracing that, that part of her aspect, the angelic goddess self. And that beautiful being is picking her up and taking her back to the light to be reintegrated into you because that was an aspect out of time. So I want you to breathe, just allow all of that to be reintegrated. Take a moment to give thanks and gratitude for all that that part of you learned. So take a deep breath in and that was just to integrate the energy going to take about 48 hours to so just let all that settle drink a lot of water now I don't want your mind to take you out down the rabbit hole I want you to stay in your heart all right and keep trusting and walking forward okay in the light of your soul do the ho'opono excuse me ho'opono and do the um, violet flame prayer okay just to forgive everything that happened all the people involved through every incarnation, yourself, all of it, to seal that in, okay, sweetheart? Okay, there you go. She's one of my tribe, so. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of understood. Yeah. Good. All righty. 
So I have a question from Patricia. She says, I'm noticing so many of my friends and students gaining a lot of weight, including myself. What is that about? Mm. Protection. Mm. Protection, trying to protect our bodies from the harm, you know, the attack that they're under. And, you know, we kind of know this subconsciously that our bodies are being attacked and we're trying to build up, you know, with gaining more weight against all of these energies that we feel that we're under attack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it isn't, it isn't healthy, of course, to, to, you know, take on more weight. But what we also need to hear the other part of the message is we need to allow our bodies, we need to tune into our bodies and we need to allow her to allow the feelings to come up because that's how she thrives is through the emotional body our body deva that's how she expresses is to have her feelings right and i feel like that some of these feelings are anger and sadness because there's anger at the it, there's anger almost could be rage at the top and underneath that is the sadness and the grief that needs to happen about our bodies being under attack especially as women for so long it's part of tapping into that collective unconsciousness feminine uh, womb energy and you need to really connect back in with your womb to allow the feminine to be healed within you it's time as women for us to begin to heal our feminine wombs that are being carried in our own womb the collective womb our ancestors of all of our mothers and grandmothers and to begin to heal this. So the first thing you want to do is just journal, get a journal and sit every day, put your hands on your womb and begin to speak to her. Bring white light of the goddess, command and connect with the goddess of the white light to come in and down to the womb and to begin to ask these energies to begin to clear out the density, clear out that density, layers of density. To begin and to begin to restore her to a healthy uh, feminine energy, which is unconditional love. That's what we're meant to carry, unconditional love. And I know that sounds like a very tall order, but, you know, it's not about perfection. It's just about our intention and our prayer to start, you know, moving in that direction or continue down the path, right? Mm -hmm. You know, just as I was sharing the example of, this back injury, you know, and even, even though it's a little bit painful, but oh my gosh, it, it created this huge unraveling in the back of my second chakra that of all this energy that needed to come out. And there was rage and anger in there about the way women have been treated, the way we've been shut down, our expression, our creativity, mm -hmm. the way we haven't been seen as equals, right? And, and you know what happened out of that? Because let me, let me share this too. It's really, really important, Alara, mm -hmm. is as you continue to heal, you, you've got to heal more to allow your creativity to flow through you and to bring through these creative ideas. And, and, and it's, it's super important. It's connected to your healing. And the, the very next, um, that Monday night, I couldn't go to sleep and I felt like I had to write. And I actually ended up channeling a message from my womb, a very powerful prophetic message from my womb. It just blew me away. Mm -hmm. Not that I haven't, you know, I don't channel, but it was like, you may come to a point where you're like, well, I've been very creative and maybe you paint or whatever you do, or, and then maybe you go through a period, you're like, well, I feel stuck, right? In that in creative endeavor. And so when that happens, you just really kind of sink into, okay, I surrender to my divine higher self to show me what is the next step for me to clear, right? To clear and to bring to the forefront um, so that I can continue to move forward. You know, just one step at a time, one step at a time. You don't have to take big leaps. Sometimes we do. But mm -hmm. just one step at a time is all that we really need to do, that next spiritual step. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes yeah. we do dive and we do plunge, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we do, or we splash. <laughs> yep, or whatever it takes, whatever it takes. 
Um, so there's a question here from Paige. I still have this energy stuck in my throat. Is this due to what you mentioned earlier or something else? I don't know. We've talked about so much stuff. Who knows? Was that <laughs> about the, uh, um, I can't remember. There's two different people about the throat issues. Yeah. So this is a new person. Paige is asking that she has. Oh. So, okay. you know, go back and listen to this again and, you know, allow that the energy to move through and expand more of your throat. And I don't know if you get anything else, Laura, for Paige. She just needs to accept, accept the energy. Just take a moment to breathe and accept. I accept it. And, and don't go into resistance. You first got to just accept it um, and let it be there and let it be there fully and give space to it. It feels like there is a lump in her throat. So just accept it and ask your guides to help you. Our guides, when we really ask them and involve them, they can help you to, to clear and cleanse these blocks out. We just have to remember to invite them in and you know, allow them to help you to move it out and dissolve it. Um, but I do, I do, it does feel like a lump in the throat. So just allow it to be there and embrace it with as much love as you can by just acknowledging it and honoring it. And then it will start to dissolve. Awesome. And Gloria is saying, I'm getting my outbreak of eczema from stepping out of my comfort zone, which you know what I'm talking about. Never had this bad, had it this bad in a very long time. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, which eczema is, is the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, there's something about olive oil. I don't know, I think they're saying, I'm asking for clarification, you need to use olive oil in your cooking. And something about that just will help with eczema. That's what I'm getting. You know, eczema is usually an outbreak of the skin, but it's an internal digestion, sometimes a digestive disorder or imbalance in the digestive area. So I don't know if you're, oh, okay. I think you're allergic to olive oil. Maybe you're using olive oil and you should not be using olive oil. You need to use something else. You either need you to use avocado oil or coconut oil. Or it could be the olive oil that you're using is not really olive oil. So she says, she says, I use avocado oil. Not using the olive oil. She uses avocado oil. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A little. Mm -hmm. A little? Okay. just asking for clarification okay I think she, they want her to switch to olive oil and stop the avocado oil I had it reversed that's what it is so she needs to try switching it that feels better that feels lighter or coconut oil Yeah, her system is very, very super sensitive, so she needs to be really careful about the type of oils that she's using. And also to make sure there's no canola oil, even higher, uh, expeller pressed, whatever canola oil, don't use that either. Don't use that. And I'm also hearing anxiety too. So let me check in with, again, the adrenals. Is that part of the issue? Yes. So some adrenal care. And using that Calm supplement, it's a powder that you can get, um, will help to calm down the adrenals as well. Um, it's like a powder mix. Um, called Calm, C-A-L-M, 
It has magnesium and potassium in it, but only half, like, half of what they recommend once a day, and that will help to calm down your adrenals. But it just feels like your whole system is irritated to me in the digestive tract, but it always starts with the adrenals, so try that too. Okay. Good. So play with that. Try it out. See how it feels. Yeah, see how it feels. And, tr and trust your knowing too, right? So Absolutely. see how it feels. Ask your body, body, do you want this, you know? Yes, exactly. But try it. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always about, just try it and see what happens. I mean, you know. Yeah. Or bring the product to front of the solar plexus and then just, you know, ask your body. Usually yeah. it moves forward for a yes, back or a no. I mean, I do that a lot because can't always even go by labels anymore on these products. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so um, how are you doing, Laura? How's your back? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Hanging in there. All right, we're going to take one, two quick last questions. Please don't type in any more in the chat, please, because, I, you know, it's hard for me to say no, but I just can't. My... <laughs> My back is hurting, my head is hurting, and you know, so it's like I'm just gonna take two more quick questions because I saw them in here. Um, but you know, when I start to be in pain, it's like I don't want to do any more, so just don't write in any more. <laughs> yeah, hard. well, we um, we'll just take these two quick ones. We'll it's a, it's a two hours, so we're yeah, I know, right? Um, so Maria says, I have been, I'm assuming, clearing my womb. Is it healed? I don't know. I said, I, I saw white light with my eyes open. Is there something else that you can see? I'm going to answer that, that quickly first. Um, there's always more to be healed. There's always more to be cleared. If you're asking the question, then you're not totally clear. But Laura, go ahead. Yeah, well, I would agree with that. I mean, you know, we, we just want, you know, my, my, it's not a linear thing, right? It's not a linear type of thing about how much clearing you just, your, your body is guiding you, your higher self is guiding you through the journey and the blueprint. You mentioned seeing the white light. Okay. The white light of your, within you, within your womb, within your core star. Is that what you were referring to? That's what I'm seeing. It's just your internal white light, your own sphere of light. So that was, that's a good thing. I mean, that's, yeah. that's an awesome thing to be in touch with that and see that. I mean, hopefully it was pleasant and cool for you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what I'm getting. If you're asking just, you know, validation, I think is what you're asking is validation. Yes, that is correct. It was your unique sphere of light, your own light being revealing itself to you. And then now, me. Work, now work with that light, work with, you know, work with the divine feminine working within you and through you to create what you desire, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so just one second. Okay. <laughs> one second here. Um, so then Colette had a quick question here. She said, my sinus mate migraine lifted during the process. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Yay. <laughs> is it still unraveling and is something stuck that needs to still release? Well, how do you feel, Colette? Is it still unraveling or does, this, does it needs to still be released? <laughs> so we'll see what Laura has to say. Yeah. It's still being released another 24 hours, but drink lots of fluid, lots of water. Trying to see, is there anything else for cut? Drink lots of water, it's still releasing. You may want to lay down and just rest. They're showing me you laying down on the bed and resting. Take like a, just a nap, mm -hmm. something it about always, it. It's always helpful. It helps to integrate the energy. Drain, yeah, and, and yeah. And, but something about the draining process as well. But yes, for the integration, absolutely, yep. Yeah, yeah, awesome, good. And that's for everybody. Like sometimes, you know, you might just need a 10, 15, 20 minute nap, you know, and that will help like enormously. Um, I used to do that a lot before when I was going through a lot of changes and integrating a lot of energies. I haven't really lately, but I think I need one today. 
<laughs> but it's already like 11 <laughs> o'clock. So it's like, okay, I'm not gonna take a nap now. <laughs> right. right. It's like, it's 11 o'clock. So it's like, I don't think I'm gonna take a nap now. I'll just go to bed sooner than normal. Yeah. But yeah. Um, awesome. So thank you. Um, so thank I just want to go back quickly and just see here some of like this we talked about so much so much on this call right but the, but the main thing i just want to quickly ask everybody and say again are you willing to exchange anything within yourself which is unlike love for a greater capacity to love are you willing to and will you do whatever it takes mm -hmm. okay will you and what is your role now uh, as an earth angel on, on the planet at this time. What is your new role? What is your new prayer? What are you ne now creating? Okay, start yeah. thinking about that for when we come out of this crisis. You know, um, I'm not in it. So it's like, I'm still the same. Nothing's changed for me, right? So I'm still creating. I'm still living. I'm still doing everything that I was doing beforehand. So for me, it's, it's a continuation. But I know for a lot of people, they've had to slow down. But it doesn't mean we stop, right? Right. So Take this opportunity to, you know, go within and see, okay, what do I want to create now? What do I, how do I want to be now? What, what role do I want to play in the new earth that is now emerging, right? Absolutely, because we're being called to return to be the goddesses of love, right? And to heal our wombs, to heal our bodies, you know, to bring back the anchor, the feminine energy is part of this, and then welcome in the masculine but as Lily has said, I love this. I choose the life that I desire to live. And we're really being called, you know, to choose that life that we desire to live with no limitations. Yeah. And it's, it's just time for us to begin to believe it and to believe it and to take action steps toward it and to see ourselves as more than these bodies that we're powerful, multidimensional beings and we are love and light. And I'll just leave with, Focus that you are 100% love and light. Focus you are the light. Mm -hmm. You are the light. And if that's just your mantra, that will carry you all the way through the ascension. I am light. I am 100% light. And I would add really quickly, you are light expressing itself through the body. Because whenever we say we are light, we've, I found in the past, mm -hmm. we've discounted the body. You know? So, but that's we, true. But we are light manifesting itself through the body expressing itself through the body so don't forget the body and a lot of what laura shared with us today had to do with helping us to maintain the body make it healthier keep it healthy uh protect it from certain energies you know etc so it's mm -hmm. really really it is really important you have to include both i mean i, I i'm saying this not just for you but for me too because i for the longest time did not include the body because i didn't want to be here it's like why am i here but we chose to be here. So now honor that choice, right? And yes. honor that choice and honor this life and be committed to your life. Be committed to who you are being and who you are becoming, right? Yeah, it's a great point because I also struggled many years of not being grounded in my body, not really taking care, really good understanding how to take good care of the body. And it's so super important because as we do that, then we are, you know, really, um, coming back into our true self, radiating our own light through the body, what we're here to do, all of it, then we are freeing women across this planet who don't have that choice right now. We really are freeing them for every one of us that opens up to become our true self and to walk that, that passage gives the opportunity to another woman across the globe to be able to enjoy and, and, and be liberated. It's all about liberation of the body. Mm -hmm. and it really is, and to liberate ourselves as women, to stand tall, confidently that we're equal, and to embody that beautiful feminine Christ consciousness. Awesome, absolutely, and I invite you all to take a look at the packages and join us in, yeah. with Laura in her new program. I think it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be um it's just so expansive and, and creative. And this is the time for all of you earth angels, all of, all of you are uh, angelic goddesses of love to show up, to shine, to be here now. And if you don't know what your soul purpose is, etc., join us in this program and find out, right? So it's going to be yes. so much fun. The, the two packages are available at alara.at4 slash show4 slash laura4. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Colette, I can't copy paste from here, so I'll try and remember what that is, or I'll try and find you. I mean, we're on Facebook too, but I'll, I'll find you, not to worry. Yeah, cool, awesome. All right, so thank you, thank All you, right. thank you, everyone. And again, uh, you know, Laura, we always have so much fun. It's like yeah, such a wonderful you. time together thank with you, you, so I just so enjoy it, so. <laughs> thank you, me too, I love it, I love it. And I'm it. looking forward to the program starting, I think, next week. You know, yes. May sixth or whatever. It's like, oh my God, May. We're already in May tomorrow. It's like, ah, in one hour, <laughs> we'll be in May. It's an hour. <laughs> like, yay! All right. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for all right. questions, Sending comments, lots of feedback. Love. <laughs> lots of love. Until next time, may you continue all to right. be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye everyone. <clears throat>